to you by L and N filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> No, sir, but I've been waiting here with Doc. I thought you might want me for something. No, but there's somebody up the street that wants you. Wants me? Yeah, Peter said he came in a barbershop and asked where the marshal's office was. He mentioned your name. Oh, yeah, and you didn't see him, huh? I didn't talk to him, but I saw him getting back on his horse. He headed for the OK stable. Oh, I wonder who he is. Uh, some stranger. I never saw him before. What do you look like? Well, he's built kind of like a stork, all legs. Got reddish hair with a white streak running right down the middle. Oh, don't like a stork and looks like a skunk. Oh, I look like a skunk. Well, you sure have some handsome friends, Chester. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. You sure about that white streak in his hair? Well, he took his hat off to sweat a horse fly. I couldn't miss it. Oh, my goodness. What? What's wrong? It's him. He couldn't be nobody else. Hey, you look scared, Chester. Is this man after you? Don't tell him where I'm at, Mr. Dillon. Tell him I went to Wyoming or somewhere. Knock out, get myself together, and then I'll hide in your office till it gets dark. Now, wait a minute, Chester. If you're in trouble, I'll help you. You can't help me. I'll, I'll go hole up out on the prairie somewhere till he leaves. i got to get out of here. Huh. Well, what do you mean? Uh... Well, you know, he must be in trouble, man. I never saw Chester act that way before. No. Look, Doc, let's uh, go down and wait for him in your office, huh? Maybe we can get some sense out of him there. When it gets good and dark, I'll... Take a rope and lower my stuff out your back window, Doc. Fine, fine, Jerky. I'm always happy to help out anybody who's on the run. I ain't running, Doc. I'm just hiding out for a spell. Look, Chester, what if this man decides to outweigh you? You're going to spend the rest of your life wandering around the prairie? He won't wait long, Mr. Dillon. He hates town. Well, then maybe he'll come looking for you out there. Well, that's better than finding me here. Why? Magnus just don't belong in a town among civilized people. He's too countryfied. Chester. Who is Magnus? Magnus Proudfoot, Mr. Dillon. Magnus Proudfoot? My baby brother, dog, on him. Well, what in the world are you running away from your brother for, Chester? I don't know what he's doing here, that's why. You can't tell what Magnus will do next, Doc. You can't count on him. What do you mean, Chester? Mr. Dillon, when Magnus was ten years old, he took off from home and went and lived off the land all by himself for two years. With a rifle and a knife and a horse. And you know something else? I swear he ain't slept in a bed since then. Well, I don't see anything so wrong with that. Well, how would you like to have a little brother that would not never come in the house except to feed now and then? And sometimes he wouldn't even show up to do that for months at a time. He claims being around people too much dulls a man's senses. Magnus is crazy, Mr. Dillon. He embarrasses me. How long has it been since you've seen Magnus, Chester? Well, I 
that Waco and took the two to join the war. I ain't never been back. The last I heard a couple of years ago, you did Magnus. I can find out where I'm at Well, anyway. he's not going to shoot you, Chester. He came to visit his big brother. What's wrong with that? Oh, no. Magnus has got something on his mind. He didn't come here just to say hello, not Magnus. He's got some scheme going. Probably wants me to go live with the Indians or some fool thing like that. I remember one time he tried to get me to go up into the Rocky Mountains with him during the winter. He said if we got cold, we could sleep in caves with bears. Well, now, that sounds like fun. Now, why didn't you go? All right, you can laugh all you want to, Doc. It ain't your brother. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Chester, no. But running away won't do any good. Yeah, Doc's right, Chester. Magnus doesn't sound like the kind of a man who'll give up finding you just because you want anywhere around. Now, you might as well stay and see what he wants, huh? You'll think it over for a while. You'll see that we're right. Horses better than people. I have the doors open. Let's take a look. Well, I don't see nobody, Mr. Dillon. Let's go, huh? Now, wait a minute, Chester. Holler for him. Oh, no. Go ahead. He might be in the back there where it's dark. Well, go ahead. Magnus. Magnus. See, he ain't here, Mr. Dillon. Now, wait a minute. Now, look. There he comes. Yeah. Chester, you have got sloppy fat. Oh, Magnus. Soft living, Dunny. Magnus, what are you doing in Dodge City? I have come looking for you. Why? Why ain't you in Texas where you belong? How come you don't talk like a Texan no more, Chester? I've been away too long, but that don't answer my question. What are you doing here? Why, well, I have come to help you. To help me? Well, I always could take care of myself better than you, Chester. And when I ran in the mall last summer and she told me about you, I got worried. I figured it's how you might need me. Need you for what? To help you run things here, help you be marshal. What? Help me be my... Well, I ain't no marshal. He's... Oh, I, I forgot. Magnus, this is Marshal Dillon. How do you do, Magnus? But I thought you was the marshal, Chester. Of course I'm not. What gave you that idea? Ma? She said you wrote her. I ain't wrote Ma for over a year. And when I did, I told her I worked for a marshal. I didn't say I was one. Honestly, too, Mr. Dillon, I never said no such thing. Well, no letter... Well, Ma's getting kind of old. She she makes the things up some these days. She sure does. Anyways, I'm proud to know you, Marshal Dillon. Uh, tell me, is Chester a good help to you? Uh, yes, 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 he is. He he's a fine help, Magnus. Good. Well, I come all this way. I reckon I'll stay. I I, I go to work for you too. Magnus, you can't just walk up to somebody and say, I'm going to work for you. Why not? It ain't polite. Nobody asked you. Nobody told me not to. I swear you ain't no more civilized than you were ten years ago. Oh, I learned a lot in the Army. Just I saw a lot of places, a lot of people. How long since you slept in bed? Well, not since I first went off from home, I reckon. How long since you lived in a town? You know I don't like towns. I generally ride around them. How long since you talked to a woman? Besides Ma, I mean. Now, Chester, you know How I long don't... since you had a drink? I don't never drink. You gamble? Feller in the army taught me, but I never used to. 
You see, Mr. Dillon, he ain't civil. Now, wait a minute, Chester. You're not being quite fair. A man doesn't have to do all those things to be civilized. I'm just trying to show him how crazy it is for him to say he wants to stay here and all, Mr. Dillon. You know, I might like it, Chester. I, I never give it a first chance. Living like you might be exciting. Yeah, may, maybe I've been missing something. You would hate it, Magnus. I'm telling you for your own good. I know you better than you do. You're half wild. That's what you are. You couldn't stand living the way I do. I never tried it, Chester. Well, go try it somewhere else. You'll just get me in trouble here. You always did. I promise I will not get you in no trouble. Besides, Marshall Dillon don't need no help. You, you can't stay here without a job. Well, I got some money. Let's go some trapping last winter. You still eat with your fingers, Maggie? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you two. Look, I got an idea. Now, maybe Chester's right, Magnus. Maybe you wouldn't like living in the town. Of course he wouldn't. He'd be miserable. But it's like Magnus says, Chester. He never gave it a chance. Now, why don't you let him find out for himself? If he gets in trouble, I'll be in trouble. Magnus don't know how to live around people, Mr. Dillon. Well, I'll live with people in the army. That's different. Well, I'm staying anyway, Chester. There's no use to argue. Give him a chance, Chester. Show him Dodge. Show him what it's like. And let him make up his own mind about it. Oh. All right, he won't leave anyway. But you're going to do what I tell you, Magnus. You're going to live exactly the way I do. That's the deal. I, I, I'll do it, Chester. All right. And we'll start by getting your room at the dog house. Oh, no. I, I'll sleep a lot better in the stable here with my horse, Chester. Hey, you see what I mean, Mr. Dillon? Magnus Proudfoot, you follow me. We're going to sleep in a bed tonight if it kills you. Magnus. Marshal? Well, where did you get to last night, Magnus? I didn't see you around anywhere. It gets dark. I generally go to sleep, Marshal. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, uh, uh, how did you like the dark house? Tell the truth now, Magnus. It's too hot. Not enough fire. That ain't all. Bed was too soft. But I slept good. I bet you was in that bed more than five minutes, Magnus. You slept on the floor. I know you did. You cheated. I'll try it again tonight, Chester. You're going to try more on that tonight. You need me for anything today, Mr. Dillon? I, uh, nothing that I know of, Chester. Then I think I'll spend the afternoon at the Long Bank playing cards. Gambling, Magnus. Oh, now, Chester, you don't want to do that. That's evil and wicked. Besides, it's wrong. Are you going to live like me, or are you ready to give up? i got to gamble, too, or can I just sit and watch? Magnus, I'm going to get you wet all over. You're going to gamble. Well, I'll go see to my horse now. Okay, but you wait at the stable for me. I'll pick you up there. I'll wait. You're being kind of rough on him, aren't you? Don't, don't you think you should take it a little slower? If I give him enough time, he might fool himself into thinking he likes town life, Mr. Dillon. And you don't think Magnus ever really would, huh? A man like him never changes. Magnus can live off the country like an animal, but he just don't know how to take care of himself around people. Well, I guess you know what you're doing, Chester, but... Uh... I was just thinking, uh, if it doesn't work and he wants to stay, uh, I think with his experience and everything, that he might be a great help to me. What? Oh, now, Mr. Jones, don't tell him that. Please don't. Anyhow, not that I've had a chance to show him what life's like around here. Please. Well, okay, Chester, I won't. You, you work on him first and see what happens. Uh... I'll wait. Uh, I think 
don't have a beer, Sam. Oh, Mr. Dillon. Uh, Chester, I thought you were gambling. What are you doing at the bar? Where's Magnus? We've been gambling all afternoon. Playing blackjack against that new dealer they got here. Oh, how'd you make out? Well, you know how it is with me, Mr. Dillon. I never do win a whole lot. Ah, that means you're lost. Yeah, but I'll get it back next payday, maybe. Next payday? Now, he really did pay you, didn't he? Yes, sir. He did. Well, what about Magnus? Here he comes, ask him. Hello, Marshal. Well, ah, that's quite a handful of bills you got there, Magnus. Well, it's all he has, but I am just as glad. I was getting mighty weary sitting in one place all afternoon. You mean you broke the dealer? Well, he claims I did. Anyway, he quit buying. Well, for a man that doesn't gamble, you seem to be a pretty fair blackjack player, Magnus. All I know is what that feller taught me in the army. Well, he must have been a good teacher. He is a gambler, Marshal. A crooked gambler to boot. What? That's why he taught me, Chester, to show me what happens when you gamble. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Magnus. You mean the dealer you were playing against today was crooked? Well, ain't most of them, Marshal. That's what this feller told me. Magnus, I just figured something. You couldn't be one unless you were playing crooked, too. Of course, I was playing crooked. That's the only way I know how. Well, I'm... Magnus, suppose he'd have found out they'd have been a cheating. He's not very good. Not near so good as his fellow has taught me in the army. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, what are you going to show him now, Chester? I don't know. Hello, Matt. Yes, sir. Hello, Kitty. Why, you just come in? Yeah, I heard Chester's kid brother was here on the meeting. Sure, Mr. Is that fine? I mean, you want a meeting? Oh, I sure do. Magnus, this is Miss Kitty, a, a real live woman, Magnus. How do you do, Magnus? Well? That's a married woman, Magnus. I'm still a miss. Oh, I don't get around women, much. Well, it's not too late to start, but if you have something against us. I'm generally off in the country somewhere as a woman. So you don't see many women, is that it? I don't see none at all. What do you do, Magnus? Hunt and trap? Mostly. Sometimes I just travel around looking. Where, Chester? I've been all over, Miss Kitty. I've been most everywhere. I'll bet you've never been to um, Canada. Like winter, I was trapping up there. You never told me you was in Canada, Magnus. You never asked me. Oh, you like Canada, Miss Kitty? I never got that far north, Magnus. Is it pretty? It's awful big. It's pretty, too. It's cold. Sometimes the trees crack. Yeah, sounds like rifle shot. You ought to hear that. It's kind of exciting. Oh, I bet it is. Spooky, too, huh? The first time it is, you get used to it. But that awful cold, Magnus. I, I don't think I'd ever get used to that. Well, it's no worse than a blizzard on the prairie. And besides, you get more shelter in them big trees up there. And the snow, it's real deep. That's the best shelter. It's awful warm when you get way down deep in the snow there. Like, uh, one time when I was coming back from my trap line. Oh, I and we got uh, night and uh, sat in up. It's supper time. We, we got to go eat. Well, that's mean. Let me finish the story, Chester. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Kitty. But you, well, we, we've got to eat sometime. Oh, Miss Kitty, ma'am, uh, have you yet yet? No, I haven't. I'd be right proud to buy you a bait. Supper? Chester and Marshall Dillon will be there. Well, I'd love to come, Magnus. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. My nerves won't stop. Uh, no, wait a minute, Kitty. Uh, let me buy a drink all the way around before we go, huh? Well, I never drank. Yeah. Well, I kind of think maybe uh, Chester will need one before the night starts. <laughs> Oh, what time is it? Oh, it's a good hour past midnight. I was about to turn in myself. 
Sounds pretty quiet tonight. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm hungry, man. <laughs> you know something? You should have had supper with us tonight. I wish I had. No, not just to eat. To hear Magnus. He asked Kitty along, and he never stopped talking to her once. I thought he was woman shy. Yeah, well, so did Chester. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, where is he now? I don't know. Chester took him off somewhere. Oh, Chester's going to get him in trouble. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's this coming here? Uh, what is it? It's a man carrying somebody. It's Magnus, man. Yeah. Why, that's Chester he's got. Happen, Magnus. Is just there hurt? He ain't hurt, Marshal. He didn't knock. Well, what's the matter with him, Magnus? Oh, he, uh, he got sleepy. Why? Well, Marshal, at the supper, Chester said we was going to have to do some drinking. He said we was going to have three, four drinks in every saloon in town. I, I didn't want to do it, but, well, you know how he's been talking. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, how far did you get, Magnus? I made all of them. But like I say, Chester, he, he got sleepy the last few, and I carried him along so he wouldn't be disappointed about it tomorrow. You carried him along like that? This is the only way I could, Marshal. Uh, uh, follow me, Magnus, and you'll put him to bed. Well, his room ain't down that way, Marshal. That's the jail. Well, we'll lock him in the cell and put him on the floor, Magnus. He might roll out of bed and get hurt otherwise. Besides, I always lock up men that get that, uh, sleepy. Ah, good morning, Magnus. Who is Chester Marshall? Oh, he's out back washing up. I, uh, turned him loose a while ago. Well, how's he feeling? Well, he says he feels fine. Says he can't imagine why he's fainted that way. Never done it before, he said. It's soft living, like I told him. Oh. Hello, Maggie. I'd come by to see if you'd like to get some coffee, Chester. Oh, I could use some. You look pretty good this morning, Magnus. I cheated again, Chester. I slept on the floor last night. Oh, that's why, huh? Uh, it's no use, Chester. I, I've been thinking, I, I, I just ain't fitting for town life. I'm going to leave. What? I, I, I'm going to leave. I, I'm better off out there in the open. Well, now, wait, Magnus, you can't leave. Well, you told me so yourself. Well, I didn't know then. I didn't know about you. Magnus, you're better off in a town than I am. Thanks, Chester, but... I know where I belong. No, now, you, you, you can't leave now, can you, Mr. Dillon? Well, it's up to him, Chester, but uh, if he wants to stay, why, well, I'll give him a job of some kind. We could use him. There, you see, Maggie? No. No, I, I tried it. You have to try everything once. But it, it just ain't for me. Well, why not? You get along fine here. What's wrong with it? Well, it's all right for you, Chester, but for me... It, it just ain't exciting enough. Not exciting enough? Well, what's exciting about living on the ground like an animal? You'd have to try that to find out, Chester. You want to come with me now? No, of course I don't. I couldn't stand it. Uh, I guess we're just different, Magnus. Now, there's nothing wrong with being different, Chester. <laughs> guess you both learned that by now. Yes, sir. I sure have. Ah, oh, but, Magnus, you don't have to leave today. You can stay till after New Year's. You got to. Why? Well, because I want you to. You're my little brother. Well, Magnus, I'm kindly proud of you. Okay, Chester, but I'm getting out of that blasted hotel. I, I want to move back in with my horse. All right, that's fine, Magnus. Of course you are. And look, I'll come help you get your stuff. You towed it over together. Thank
under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gun Smoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound pattern by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Bob Easton plays back. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNeil is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.